Yo, what is going on everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, let's break down how I made $8,000 from my day trading. And this was probably done within an hour. So this was good. Hey, this was good. Um, I'm in a little rush now, so this video will be quick. Um, let's get it. Let's break it down. And uh, so the first thing first that I want to break down is uh, the time frames that I use for trading because it's super freaking important to actually understand that for different times of the day, you need to watch different charts okay so that means right at the market open from 9 30 to 10 a.m i watch two minute chart okay i just watch two minute chart just by itself that's it then from 10 a.m to 11 a.m i watch um, five minute chart just five minute chart and 11 to 3 p.m I watch 10 minute chart and 3 to 4 p.m eastern time i do not trade i don't trade so <clears throat> this trade, the first trade that I took on, on the day on Tesla was taken on a two minute chart because this was taken in this window. So just remember this, okay? Um, and now, when I took this trade, and also another thing that I want to really, really freaking important is um, the first trade of the day should always be taken with a small position size because just in case if the trade doesn't go in your favor, you don't want to lose thousands and thousands of dollars just in case if the trade doesn't go in your favor. You want to lose the minimum amount of money. So you're still fresh for the next trade. You see what I'm saying? Now, I was watching Tesla, and Tesla was like, as soon as Tesla started, it broke this little, look at this. It kind of was forming this little, um, it kind of was forming this little, you know, trend line thingy. We had a lot of touches happening in the pre-market. Look at this. A lot of touches happening here. We broke above this whole thing. We broke above the pre-market high. 250, huge critical number, level. just 250, just a whole number. And again, another thing, 250, 300, 350, 400, all these $50 marks, they are super important levels. Usually when a stock breaks out of this, that means it can be nicely trending for the rest of the day. Um, that's most of the times what can happen. Also, it depends how clean it broke out. If it, bro if it breaks something like, then you know you're going to be choppy. But if it breaks like this, that's good. You see what I'm saying? So now I saw this 250 break. I saw this pre-market high break. I saw, you know, how we broke above this little trend line that I showed you. We went, and I'm a sort of trader, I like to wait for a pullback. Um, I waited for a pullback. I waited for some sort of pullback. And now I had this 251 as a critical level that I was paying attention to. So what I did was I went from the bottom of the day to high of the day. I drew this Fibonacci. Okay, this is what I was seeing at the, at the time. I drew this I drew this Fibonacci from bottom of the day to half the day. All right? And I got these 0 0.236 and 0 0.382 and these are my settings by the way if you want to take a screenshot of this, these are my settings. Okay, take a screenshot um make sure you have similar settings. Um and I always pay attention to 0 0.236 and 0 0.382. Essentially, I was kind of thinking I'm like if it comes back down and retest this 250, that'll be super freaking cool. If we can do that, that'll be nice. But it never did, uh, but uh, it kind of started holding this, but this this became a confluence. Look at this. It became a confluence. Why? Because we have Fibonacci level. We have 251, which is an hourly level or critical level for me. And confluence is when there's more than one reason for you to jump into trade. One reason is Fibonacci. Second reason is a break and a retest of a huge critical level. So the mistake, the, not a mistake, but the thing that I, I was looking for a little confirmation because the first trade of the day, and it was election day and I was kind of taking it easy. So I didn't jump in the moment that this happened. I jumped in when we broke above this next yellow line. I was like, okay, if it breaks above this next yellow line, I'll jump in. So the next candle broke above the next yellow line and I jumped in here. I jumped in calls here. I'm like, I'll put a stop loss just on the down on, on, on towards the downside. But it was because it was kind of wide risk. So I did a very small position size. I was expecting a big move. And this is what happened. It's, it played around and then I hit my stop loss and I jumped out. This was a trade, the reason why I wanna really, really talk about this trade is super important one, that you need to have a stop loss. Follow the stop loss, it is what it is. Sometimes trades just don't work out the way you want them to work out, and it's okay, you see what I'm saying? So when I was in this test, um, this Tesla trade, I also ke started keeping an eye on this QQQs. I saw this QQQs setting up, and I was like, this looks really, really clean, right? 
KKQ is broke above the pre-market high. He it made a nice, or kind of tried to make a move above this um, yesterday high, but it broke above the yesterday's high. And um, please, if you're taking notes, write this down. Yesterday's uh, or pre-market high levels are very important levels. And the moment it breaks above, you know for a fact that, okay, there's huge possibility that the trend might start. Now, I waited for a pullback. I want to see a pullback. And now a pullback started happening. I'm like, okay, let's see. Where you want to pull back to? I personally, I was still waiting. I didn't like this huge freaking candle. So I didn't jump in here. But when we saw this 489 started holding, I saw price got above 489. It's a critical level. It got above 489 and now it's holding. Look at this. This candle was able to close above 489. It's a break and a retest. And now we are holding this 489. When I saw this, that's when I'm like, okay, if we are able to break this little flag pattern that's setting up, if we are able to break above this, I'll jump in. My stop loss can literally go on the other side of this. Right, this 489. My first profit target can be this. So I'm risking about 48 cents to potentially make 56 cents. Not bad. And then if the next level hits, my stop loss is still the same, but the reward significantly increases. So I was watching this. Bro, keep your trading simple, man. A lot of people fail in trading because they make it super complicated. Keep your trading simple. And when I saw this, I was like, okay, if the next candle breaks above, I'll jump in. Right? And boom. Guess what? I'm in the trade now. It made a huge move up. You see what I'm saying? And it kept going. Every single time, and, and this is called negative risk management, um, I'll really quickly break it down. So that means, let's say if you jumped in, 20 contracts okay let's say 20 contracts they're dollar each for example times 20 that means your position size is two thousand dollars and this trade was 70 percent trade that means um if i if my position size is two thousand i made 1400 bucks all right if you're vk maths <laughs> uh, that's how the numbers work all right 50 percent would be thousand 70 is 1400 dollars in profit all right. So what a, this negative risk management simply means as soon as we break above the critical level, the next yellow line that I have on my charts, I'm going to take half off. So the moment it hits my next yellow line, I'm going to take 10 contracts off. So whatever the money is, let's say these contracts that were sitting at dollar, now they're sitting at dollar 40. I'm going to take 10 contracts off. That means I made $400 in profit already. And I still have 10 contracts running. I made $400 profit. I still have my runners running, but I put $400 in my pocket. Now, where do you take the stop loss of the runners? The If the price started pulling back a little bit, the stop loss for those runners is simply break even. If the contracts came down and hit your entry point, if this $1.40 contract, not the stock price, but if $1.40 came down and hit the dollar, uh, $1 point, you jump out. Stop loss for these runners in negative risk management is break even. That means all you can do is win, all right? You already put the money in your pocket. If it goes and hits the break even, you do not lose any of your money. You still take all your money out. But the moment it goes and hits the next yellow line, you take another 50% off. You see what I'm saying? That means if you were sitting, um, now you had 10 contracts, you'll take another five off. The stop loss for the remainder of five is still break even. Now, at, at this point, this contracts might be $1.70, and you took five off, so now there's three hundred fifty dollar profit. So now four hundred dollars plus three hundred fifty bucks. There's seven hundred fifty bucks in your pocket already. You see how this whole thing works. And now the remainder of the contracts, you keep doing this. Next level is half and half. Now, if you have five, you can't take two and a half off. So you're gonna take three contracts off. Then you have two left. Then you take one off and one off. You jump out. Stop loss is still break even, and this is called negative risk management. The day when the stuff is trending, you can make a lot of money with this. But if it if it pulls back, guess what? You do not lose any of your money. You still made money from the original move. All right, this is called negative risk management, and this was a trade, man. Um, pretty pretty decent trade, pretty pretty solid trade, and it was it <laughs> it was really really nice. The moment ten o'clock hit, I jumped on a five minute chart. Um, actually took another trade on this a little bit later, which didn't work out. So I'll break it down as well. But that trade was on a five-minute chart. Now, I, I this trade was nice, the early morning trade, which I broke down. Uh, now I'm watching five-minute chart because this trade was taken after 10 o'clock. Right? 
I saw this. I saw the price came down, price pulled back. And we have a nice, nice, like you can visually see such a nice trend. You see what I'm saying? Such a visually, we can see such a nice trend. We have, we are bouncing off this Fibonacci point. And the Fibonacci's are just like drawing from the low of the day to the high of the day when the market is open. You have these 0 0.236 and 0 0.382 critical levels. And now we have a confluence. The confluence here is Fibonacci point is sitting here. Price broke above the Fibonacci and we bounced off this eight exponential mov moving average, ATMA. And this is my settings of ATMA, by the way, if you wanna take a screenshot. All right, I like this. I really, really liked this. So I decided to jump in and I was thinking it will go and hit the you know next yellow lines that I had on my chart. But it pulled back, stop loss was just below this, so I jumped out. I lost a very tiny amount of money, but this was the trade. Uh, but originally from QQQs, I made a bunch of money, so, and I just jumped out, I'm done. I, this was QQQs, but SPY was really good. SPY was really, really good trade. I'll really quickly break this down. Similar concept, everything was similar. Um, my entry was a little it's bit late. It's 22 hours. My entry was a little bit late, okay? Um, my entry came the moment we broke above the ORB. Oh, what's ORB now? ORB is the range of first 15 minutes. Okay, what does that mean? First 15 minute candle. So what is the first 15 minute candle of the market? The highs and lows of the first 15 minute candle, you mark them on your charts and you pay attention to them. They mark as super important levels during the day. Like, I mean, I can show you, man, this these are so freaking important levels like look at this this red line and this green line we broke below this red line we made a decent trend then we bounced off this red line quite a few times during the during the day look at this red line bounce red line bounce green line bounce break and retest of this green line bounce and bounce oh my god these orbs the first 15 minute ranges are so freaking important you need to watch this and this was a trade that i took I had a confluence that I was watching, which was a, this was an hourly level. Okay, this is a solid critical level. Now the prices was able to, at this time I was not watching this spy because I was watching this QQQs, it was in QQQs, but I saw this spy break above the ORB and we have a confluence of ORB. It's bouncing off the ORB on a two minute chart and also it is a, it got above this critical level that I had on my charts. Now there's two reasons for me to jump into a trade. ORB plus hourly level that I have. But two reasons for me to jump into a trade. The moment that this happened, I jumped in and I caught this move. Took some, took half off here, took half off here. A beautiful trade. You see what I'm saying? And alongside, along with this, on a five minute chart, this is looking absolutely insane. Look at this, this five minute chart, looking beautiful. This little pullback that we saw, I entered again. I oh my god, this was such a quick scalp. Um, but I added, but I did SPX during this this uh, push as well, which was somehow resulted in most amount of profits. The same thing. I was watching spy chart, but I was trading SPX. Now you might be like, what is the difference between spy and SPX? Okay, so that means. I'll just say, but I'll just talk about the exposure. Okay, um, if you have, what is the me what is the meaning of exposure? If you want to do ten contracts on SPY, you'll only have to do one contract on SPX. Ten contracts on SPY means if you pay, let's say, even if you pay thirty cents per contract as commission, now that's three bucks. Here you only pay thirty cents. Now that's two seventy. $2.70 saved, that's for 10 contracts. But the moment you start doing more big position sizes, like for SPY, there, there are days, like the SPY was 110% trade. Um, there are days where I take 500 contracts of SPY. I'll take five, six, 700 contracts of SPY. So just 500 contracts, now you do the maths, $3.30 um, times five, this is 150 bucks. To jump in, 150 to jump out. So instead of doing 500 here, I'll rather will just do SPX contracts, but, but I'll do 50 contracts. Now that's, I save a little bit of money. And this adds up, this 300 bucks. Imagine you're doing that 300 bucks every single day. That's $75,000 a year. 
You see what I'm saying? It add it, this commissions add up. So that's why when I'm trading SPY, I oftentimes switch to SPX. Um, and I same I still watch SPY's chart. I just trade SPX. And uh, this was I exited really quick on SPX because they move very wild, and I had like forty percent returns. Um, I was still in. I had some SPY that was hundred and ten percent trade. Um, SPX was forty percent trade. And it's just about you know managing your. Um, it's called manage, uh, having still having the exposure into the market for the move, but just managing your trade. And that's what I did. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, man. It was a beautiful trade. And um, honestly, this is literally the trades that I took. And I didn't want to make a very long video. I wanted to just really quickly break down the concepts that you need to grasp. Um, the whole concept, if, you, if I have to break down everything, is different time frames for different times of the day. Second would be pay attention to confluences, learn how to use Fibonacci's and uh, pay attention to ORBs. And I use an indicator on ORB. You can go to this indicator, search ORB. This, this dude, ORB ZZZ Crypto, just click on this and then go on the settings of this indicator and change the settings here. 9.39.45 because the market opens 9.39.45, change the style, change the visibility. This is the visibility that I have. Now it will automatically mark the first 15 minutes on your charts and you need to pay attention to this and that's pretty much it. So what did I break down? I broke down um, ORB, I broke down eight exponential moving average bounces, gave you the settings for eight exponential moving average, Fibonacci's. There's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of ground that we covered. Um, but this is a shorter, ver shorter version of video. A lot of, uh, a lot of people said, hey, um, try short version videos as well because I was making like one hour long videos but I, I do need a favor from you if you're watching this on YouTube please let me know in the comments down below um, if I should keep on making short for short shorter videos like 15 20 minute long videos or should I just go back to making 45 minute hour long videos these videos are super easy for me to make so I can maybe make a lot more of these um, one hour long videos it's very hard to just like put, you know put them in my schedule uh, but anyway you let me know what do you think? And um, if you want to learn more about, you know, um, my trading recap videos, there will be a there'll be a playlist here. And if you want to learn from me one on one um, and actually so I can actually show you the strategies that actually matter, all the systems that I use, there's probably a link somewhere here. Go there, apply 30 seconds and subscribe to the channel. Yo, subscribe to the channel and comment. Let me know. All right. Peace. I'm out. Look after yourself. Goodbye.